pretty chaotic person myself. Creatives and stars and people like that all often are, aren't they? You're the anomaly. I'm the exception, I'm the exception to the rule. Yes, you're, you're the black swan, Judith. Oh, I like the idea of being black I swan. You might. I thought you might. I'm all in black today, actually. Right. There you go. So I am the black swan today. Right. Well, you're the black swan in the creative camp. You're an organised okay. creative. I'm channelling the black swan. Is, okay. Wasn't she a nasty person in the film? I haven't seen the film, so I have no right. connotation. <laughs> I think she was. I think, I think she was the uh, Dr. Jekyll to the Mr. Hyde or whichever way round it was. <laughs> There is a book called The Black Swan by one of the big marketing gurus, and it's oh. you know, it's all about how how these random events occur and people never never see them coming. So you're a random event that nobody's ever seen coming. <laughs> I don't, to be honest, I don't mind that description either. No, fair enough. It's all it's all glamorous, no matter which way you paint it. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, Judith? I'm a random event that nobody saw coming. <laughs> By the way, by the way, I've got an iron fist in a velvet glove, so watch out for yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And my camouflage is pink. Your business and your life with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. A bit miserable today. I mean, yeah. weather-wise, not me. No, quite. <laughs> of course, I'm happy, I'm happy as Larry because it's our 50th anniversary today. Yes, I'm slightly worried that the content of what I've got to tell you isn't really, isn't really celebratory enough for episode 50. Well, you, know what I mean? you, know, you know what? It's a warts and all podcast, this one, where we talk yeah. about what really happens in people's business and what people really yes. have to overcome. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So do you want to start then? I'm ready. Okay, you tell me what's been happening in your week, Judith. Uh, one good thing, one bad thing. What should I tell you first? Uh, well, I think you better tell us the bad thing first. <laughs> yeah, somebody's broken the back window of my car. Oh, God. Again, actually. It's happened twice since I lived in this street. And I, I'm hoping it's a common fault with that model, i.e. a weakness in the way the car. Because I, I was thinking, the man from Autoglass is going to come and see me this afternoon and fix it in the street. But... I've been driving for 40 years and I've never had a car before where the back window has gone once, let alone twice. So are you thinking that it's someone perhaps doing it on purpose? No. I'll tell you what happened the first time. I was poorly, really, really, really poorly and got in the car to drive to the supermarket to get some drugs. And as I slammed the driver's door, the back window smashed like that. Bang! I thought somebody was trying to assassinate me. It was like a bullet. Oh, bloody hell. I know. And I was really poorly. So I just just drove the car with a big wind to the supermarket, parked it in the supermarket car park, came back. Yesterday, my next door neighbour who drives the identical car to me rang my doorbell because he knows I don't move it as much as he does. He's got his family and... Yeah. And um, he said, do you know your back window smashed? And of course, I didn't. Uh, and of course, this time, I don't know how it happened. Uh, I'll ask the man today whether there's any, um, and I suppose I could Google it as well. Yeah. It'd be interesting to know whether this model, it's a fault that goes with the car. Uh, I'd rather think that than that somebody just stove in my back window. Yes. And and the other worrying thing, of course, is because we don't go out very often. <laughs> how long it's been like that? Well, not that long, because I think it's Wednesday today, and I think I used the car on Monday. Oh, OK. Um, yeah. So not, not that long, but it could be, because sometimes I don't use the car for 10 days. Uh, yeah, and of course, one doesn't want to go down the route of thinking that it could be that chap who wants to dig out your basement. Well, I don't think it's him. 
Um, what would be interesting? Well, uh, what would be interesting to know, given that my next door neighbour's um, car is identical, is whether anybody would know whether it was his or mine. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. I'm going to ask the man, is it a common fault with the car? Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping it's that. To be that's honest. the first place to start, isn't it? It is. And the good thing is I had a client visit, which was much nicer. Some of my clients save up their save up their hours and come and see me. And I, I was off in August and then my client's son got married in September. And so for October, she came and did three hours here. Rihanna, who's one of our listeners. Oh, me a lovely yes. pink. Yeah, she brought me a lovely pink cyclamen pot plant, which is on my desk and cheering me up. And uh that was nice. Uh, I don't, as you know, face to face isn't our favourite thing, but if it's a client I already know and I know well, and she's been here several times, I'm very happy for them to come. So that was my, that was my nice news. Yeah, I think the only reason we're not keen on on face to face is because we're, we're, you know, we find it easier to listen better when we're not looking as well. I, I think that's absolutely true. Yes, but. Um, Rihanna's probably a creator, but the star supporters in our lives, they like to pop round and have a chat. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's quite a lot of, given that they are the people who are most likely to invest in coaching often, you know, I quite often have to say no, particularly to strangers. But anyway, it's lovely to have Rihanna visit. Tell me about your week. Um, what's been happening my week? Well, I was, I was, we've had the builders in, which is made for, they're not in exactly, they're on scaffolding outside. And as you know, and do you have uh, so got broadband back? Broadband came back on Monday morning and nice. actually the BT man was extremely nice and helpful and we could have had him last Tuesday afternoon. But, you know, we all got in a bit of a tizzy when, when the first one said, oh, it's going to cost an absolute fortune sucking his teeth as they do. And, yeah. um, and then Heather had a bit of a panic because she's the one who would have to pay for it because she's the one who issued the instruction to cut the wire. Yes. And, um, and she so she then spent a week trying to f- get, you know, a, a mate of the bloke, Martin, who's doing the, um, the you know, the building to yes. come and have a look. And he couldn't manage it. And then he was in London and it was going to be late. And, you know, on, 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 on it went. For the meanwhile, a week of your business, your online business has passed by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fine, but Steve's as well, because he's, he's staying here at the moment. So yeah. it's like we had to decamp to Steve flat to uh, to to even get online for any any le- 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 well, that's quite funny that's almost like commuting to work you two isn't it yeah it was and you know what it's made me realize i quite like to get out of the house occasionally well occasionally i agree yeah I, i'm investigating base camp which is um above our rope tackle art center at the end of shoreham high street yeah you know what the really hilarious thing is if we end up getting an office there when i was do you remember the story i tell of when i was a little girl i wanted to be a business person a business lady or a princess Whenever I imagined what a business lady meant, I had this vision of a big, tall glass building at the end of a street. And and I've come to realise that Base Point is it. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's oh, dear. a bit oh, dear. spooky. That is. That's a bit woo-woo for you. It's yeah. actually made me go a bit tingly up the back of my neck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, a one-person office wasn't quite what I had in mind, <laughs> but it'll do nicely. <laughs> So, yeah, that's and, and, you know, the other thing is, obviously, you have to be a bit careful when you're getting dressed in the morning, because I'm, I'm sure the builders think I do absolutely sweet F.A. because, you know, we have to get up to let them in, which is at eight o'clock, quarter to eight. And, and then and then, you know, obviously, we don't then appear in the kitchen for a good hour or something yeah. um, coming down, you know, and I'm sure they think that I just don't do anything at all because I never go out of the house. So <laughs> I don't know. Well, what you- I don't know. People come round here like the gardener and things, and I sit at my desk for eight hours at my computer while he's there. I I think people understand about people working at home these days more, don't they? Yeah, it's possibly. Yeah, it's just it's just a, a fleeting thought that goes through my head occasionally, and and you know, especially when you get stuck into something, you go to the computer so, too soon before you're dressed. So you, the other thing you've got to be careful of is builders walking past your bedroom window at the eye yes. line where they can actually just look in if it's open, and um, yes, yes, it's yes. disconcerting sometimes. <laughs> yes, you're going to have to be a little circumspect for the remainder of their time with you. Yes, I think so. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for my week. Just you know, you you don't realise how much you rely on broadband and you can't have it you don't realize how inadequate dongles are and if you live in a flint cottage how your mobile phone does not turn into a wi-fi hotspot <laughs> <laughs> not by any stretch of the imagination no no <laughs> okay so what's fueled your fire this week then uh, well, um, by the time this airs, it'll be the end of October, and uh, what's fueled my fire is 2016 planning. So soon already. Yes, absolutely. I love that bit. Except I save it between Christmas and New Year. 
I know you do. So um, I, I have a little uh, incentive to my clients at the end of October or the beginning of November every year, and I've prepped it to go out on Friday. It's so that they can bag a special offer for 2016. They don't even have to start until 2016. As long as they pay for it by the 31st of October, they can bag it at a special price. So I got up on Monday morning full of enthusiasm somehow to do that. And so I've done my weekly newsletter days early. And funnily enough, somebody sent me an email yesterday saying, um, I want to you know, book my slot for 2016. What's the deal? And I said, well, if you pay by the 31st of October, extra 300 quid off. So somebody actually got in ahead of me announcing it to the world. That's quite <laughs> exciting. And I've invented a new way of, of, of being with clients, which is quite good fun and a little bit ironic, given what I'm going to talk about in Client Challenge of the Week. But we talk here quite often about how much clients appreciate our energy. So I invented something new called Ignite, Ooh. which means that they can borrow my energy if they're not actually clients already. So something I do with clients is if they've got a deadline and they're feeling a bit reluctant or sluggish about it, I breathe down their necks a bit while they're doing it. So if they're going to give a talk, I'll be with them every day during the preparation of the talk up to and the talk. If they've got to finish a book or if they've got to meet a deadline or something, I will be with them so that they've got me in addition to their own conscience, if that makes sense. And I thought, well, I could offer that to non-clients. So I banged it up on my website. Um, and both of those things I woke up with on fire, literally, this section's called What's Fueled Your Fire, and Monday morning I sort of leapt out of bed, and that's getting harder, I don't know if you've noticed, <laughs> leaping out of bed as, as winter draws on, it's getting a bit harder. Isn't it? Oh, this morning, it was very dark and rainy this morning. Yeah, I know. Nice. I love this idea. I want. Um, I love having new product ideas myself, as you know, as well. Well, <laughs> and I, I really have ironies, that's actually what I'm going to talk about next. Anyway, carry on. And and um, and the other thing I like about this for you particularly is that you haven't really had an outside your coaching programs product, but this could be it. It could be. Yeah, nice one. Okay, well I'm looking forward to going straight to your website and reading more about it. Yeah, it's marvelous. So you tell me what's fueled your fire this week. It's a spreadsheet, Judith, and and it's a new system on a spreadsheet, and it has come out of a dilemma I had in that I went from you know I had a little barren September, right? and I think I know why that happened now. September everyone was just getting back to school and getting you know th th I didn't experience any drop off in business in August which is when you expect to drop off experience people you know um, going on holiday and things like that so I think my my drop off came in September because that's when people get back to school they haven't got any time to think about anything else and then suddenly I got this massive influx and I totted them up um, at the beginning of the week because I had nothing else to do with no broadband I, I realized that I had 15 potential clients at least half of whom had said I want to start at the end of October early November and I thought I know what's going to happen now um basically they're all going to turn up on the same day they're all going to want to pay on the same day and they're all going to want to me to start their ads on the same day <laughs> so, yeah. so I thought to myself how does it normally work what's the what's the workflow once a client said yes and what realistically is the timeline between when they say yes when they get their invoice when they get their agreement when they pay their invoice when they so inga send doesn't send that request until we've been paid because we've been burned like that a few times where we've actually leapt into action and then the clients changed their mind so i thought okay is there a visual way i can put this on in fact i spoke to steve about it i said should I use Google Docs, uh, you know, um, a calendar and make it public and let people see, you know, make slots when people could say, so can you just do it on a spreadsheet? It'd be much, much easier. So I created a new spreadsheet and I had blocks of clients like new client one, new client two, new client three. And I figured I could do three in a week. So I put um, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, and I staggered them along the spreadsheet. So now when I have a call with a client and they're all excited and fueled up, um, I can say to them, OK, so let's get you booked in because this is the schedule. And if you know you want your ads to start here, you, we can see <coughs> that you need we need to do all the admin and finance bits two weeks before. And, yeah, and I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And it, yeah, it, I, I mean, it, it, I tell you what, yesterday I asked my hairdresser to come and she said she couldn't come until the 29th of October. And I said, fine. And somebody asked me to be on his podcast. And he said the first date I can do is November the 15th. And I said, fine. I think people have reasonable expectations about how long it takes to get booked in to do anything, don't they? Yeah, well, I don't know if they do. But, you know, certainly what I experience is they turn up, they pay their money and then they expect the ads to start literally that afternoon. So I think it's an education process for me at the end of the um, discovery call to just 
walk, visually walk them over to the spreadsheet and say, well, when would you like your, 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 your leads to start flowing in then? Yeah. And, and then show them visually that if they want their leads to start on that date in November, we need to get everything set up by this day previously. And it's made. It's yeah. made so I sent out an email to all the 15 people who were lurking about and said, um, OK, click this link. If you're a visual person, I say click this link and go and choose when you'd like your leads to start flowing. And you'll see when we need to get everything set up by. And if you're not a visual person, here's a quick list that tells you what happens on week, weeks one to six. And it really did. It really did work. I got lots. Of, in fact, I got sent one one reply back from a very marketing savvy person who's been asking me to do their ads, and uh, she said, "Oh, I love this email." <laughs> so she realised exactly what I was doing, <laughs> and um, and everyone else just booked themselves in. It was lovely. Yeah. But I feel much more relaxed now because I know that um, I've got a little system to follow. Because I'm not the. I, you know, I'm a pretty chaotic person myself. Creatives and stars and people like that often are, aren't they? You're you're the un um what's the word I'm looking for? You're the anomaly. I'm the exception, I'm the exception to the rule. Yes, you're you're the black swan, Judith. Oh, I like the idea of being black I swan. You might. I thought you might. I'm all in black today, actually. There you go. So I am the black swan today. Right. Well, you're the black swan in the creative camp. You're an organ. Okay. Creative. I'm channeling the black swan. Is, wasn't she a nasty person in the film? I haven't seen the film, so I have oh, no right. connotation. <laughs> she was. I think. I think she was the uh, Doctor Jekyll to the Mister Hyde, or whichever way round it was. <laughs> There is a book called Black Swan by one of the big marketing gurus, and it's oh. you know, it's all about how um, how these random events occur and people never never see them coming. So you're a random event that nobody's ever seen coming. <laughs> I don't, to be honest, I don't mind that description either. No, fair enough. It's all it's all glamorous, no matter which way you paint it. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, Judith? I'm a random event that nobody saw coming. <laughs> Oh, by the way, by the way, I've got an iron fist in a velvet glove, so watch out for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And my camouflage is pink. Yes, my camouflage is pink. But first, a word from our sponsors. Do you feel isolated and alone in running your own home-based business? Do you have worries, doubts, fears, and resistance which sometimes make you feel like giving up? Don't worry. You're not alone. In fact, you're perfectly normal. It can be scary all by yourself. But what if you could learn how to become a confident business owner, how to trust yourself more and grow your income, relax and be more creative and productive? Small Business Big Magic is a unique business mentoring group providing grounded practical support and advice, fast responses to your questions, inspiration and solutions to boost your clarity and help you find direction, focus and success in your life and business. Join Small Business Big Magic today for the friendship and encouragement of others just like you and the enthusiasm of a coach who gets you and your business. There's big magic for your small business at judithmorgan.com. So what's our client challenge of the week then? Well, episode 50, Nicola, isn't that exciting? Oh, it is. I, 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 no, do you know, Judith, most podcasts, and I don't, I haven't got the exact percentage, but most podcasts don't make it to the 50th episode. So I tell you, it, uh, I had a little challenge myself, given that I'm an accountant. I thought, how come we've got episode 50 and we're in October? And that's nearly a year and we started in December. And of course, then I remember you made me do six or eight weeks to get going all in a lump, didn't you, in December? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a very good question indeed. That would have flummoxed me completely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, client challenge of the week. Um, keeping the offer simple. Oh, yes, that is, a that is a challenge. Well, I've put the challenge of being a creator scanner ideas person. Um, I don't want to get sucked into ideas and scanners and creators. I want to talk about keeping the offer simple. And what I mean by that is so people understand who you are, what you stand for, and that you can stand still long enough to be caught. All right. So what I wanted to talk about, and, and you and I have both done this since I've known you, and my clients do it all the time. And I've sort of done it myself this week as well with my new thing which is we're a bit inclined to want to say to clients and another thing and another thing and another thing I can do so much for you I've got so much I can help you in in myriad different ways you know I can chuck lots of information at you and actually I don't think they want that I think they want the offer even if you can back it up with 40 years of experience or 20 years of experience and, and a workbook and a and documents and <laughs> da, 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 and a membership size da, 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 da. you know keep the front end offer simple 
I totally agree. Since I have really focused all my energy on presenting um, a fairly united front on clicks and leads to the world, things have, have gone so much better. Well, isn't that uh, interesting? Yeah. And how long did it take you and I to learn that lesson? For, for forever, didn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, funny one was I started when, you know, we started on 998, 99 with the money gym, except it wasn't called that then. It was just called Wealth Wealth Creation with Nicola Gangross. It's... um. I, it, Chris Barrow said, it's one offer. Do you want it or what? It focuses people's mind into making a decision. Well, apart from different iterations, that's all Chris Barrow's done in that same time as coach dentists. Yes, and he has. That makes it simple. If you look at Seven Connections now, there's quite a lot of different offers to suit all different kinds of dentists, but yeah. they're all under the, well, the, 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 the core thing, isn't it? It's the core thing, which is keep it simple. Yeah, he, co- he coaches dentists. We know what he stands for. We he stood still long enough for us to catch him. Yeah, and that's something you often say to me is, you know, when I say, "Oh, something's not working," you say, "You you haven't given him a chance to catch up yet. It takes people two years." Yeah. It does take people a long time. Uh, one of my newish clients this week, who is an artist, um, and he's one of a of a small group of artists who really like to create a visual image of something that helps them think through business concepts. He shared yesterday a a really simple graphic which he'd borrowed from a business guru, but it was all it was really a marketing funnel. Um, And what uh, and he shared it and I asked him to put it in the group so we could all see it because actually it's a business model for an artist. But it's also the business model I follow, which is, you know, have lots of free stuff and then you have an affordable thing and then a bit more expensive, a bit more expensive. And the top end is exclusive. And and I said something like, well, this is a marketing funnel or something. I can't remember exactly what I said. And somebody else said, what's a marketing funnel? But actually what I really wanted to say to him was now follow that for the rest of your life. (laughs) You know, because it it sounds dull and like a prison sentence. But actually, if you look at Chris Barrow, who we know has stood for coaching dentists for 15 years, has his life been dull in that time? No. (laughs) But... But what's happened is his brand has grown big enough for everybody to be able to find him easily when they're ready to pay him to do the work with him. Yeah. And, you know, even as we're talking about it, I could feel that sense of being constricted. But actually, it's it's a freedom. And I I tend to think of it as, you know, the um, the the scuts skyscrapers going up in New York and the people who are they called stevedores aren't they the people who swing from the scaffolding and they're actually what I think of as creative creative people who've got a, a structure to swing out from and be safe while they're being creative and free and but but if you didn't have that structure to swing out from you would be chaos and all over the shop and yeah. plunging to your doom. <laughs> yes, I think I, 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 we've talked about this quite often about how a structure can be supportive in a way. And I think one sometimes as a creative person or an ideas person might choose to see it as uh, supportive rather than restrictive. But uh, I do spend quite a lot of time with people who assume too quickly it's not working. So we'll try something else. no. Keep trying, keep put some more welly behind the things that we started, because if you keep popping up in surprising different areas, nobody knows what the hell is going on. Yes, yeah, very true. And when you think about the biggest coaches, they've 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 started, you know, Amy Porterfield, Marie Folio, Bernadette Doyle. Um, who else is there? Claire Martin. You know, people who've stuck by the, the thing that they're known for for you know, a good five to five to seven years, they're all at the top of their game. And that's probably why they're, they, they're at the top of the game. But well, there you go. And I think my particular point today is, is not just sticking by your thing, but making sure that the entry point to your thing is very simple. Yeah. Because if you can imagine, let's say Marie Folio, who's got, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of followers and fans and admirers around the world. And ultimately, we might want to work with her at her top end program. But if she gives us as a potential newbie, you know, client of hers, everything she knows in the first week, we're going to fail and be overwhelmed and not sign up. So she's got to distill that down into a little pointy three point 
offer you know that, that that if you work with me it includes this this and this end of yeah that's very true although having said that when i talk to facebook ads clients i often talk to the ones who've got a very simple effective funnel which is um they give away a report they invite people to come for a strategy session they sell them onto their coaching program and it's usually yeah. high, t- high ticket and the reason yeah. they're coming to me for facebook ads is because they've got sick of um doing that and trading their time for money and they want to swap to selling digital products but I, as I've said, you know, the fastest let let's get let's get more people in the door of what you're already offering, which we know works and we know your conversions, and then let's you know with the extra cash, then let's buy you some time to then try experimenting with digital products because you haven't you haven't tested this digital product funnel, and and you you will you will panic when it doesn't work quite as quickly as you think it should. So it's think- much better to have the you know the other stuff rolling along as well. I think you're exactly right there. All anybody wants is more people in the front end. Yeah, and then you can work out what to do with them afterwards. <laughs> yes, well, once they've begun to know, like, and trust you and might yeah. buy a digital product off you. Yeah, and then and then you've got the people who want to run Facebook ads straight to a sales page, which is never in a million years going to work, but they some of them still insist on trying. Whereas it's much better to run, you know, cold traffic to a lovely, fuzzy front end warm offer like you've got lots of low, you know, free, free. And, you know, it'd be very easy for someone to get to you, get to know you online, wouldn't it? Less easy for people to get to know me online unless they went to my personal site nowadays. But having said that, when they come to clicksandleads.com, there is no doubt about what simple offer I'm making. It's we'll do Facebook ads for you. Well, I there you go. I have been tempted, though, Judith, and I had to resist putting Facebook, Twitter and Instagram on there. But that yeah. just but that just dilutes the offer. You know, I can always yeah. offer people who've started with. Well, there you go. You're making my case to me. Open it out afterwards. Get them yeah. in on the simple book. Yeah, that's yeah, very true. And it has made a massive, massive difference in my business. So I, I totally recommend it. But I think simplicity is a bit of an ongoing challenge, isn't it? Um, keeping it simple. I, I do quite often feel overwhelmed when clients describe to me, you know, I can do this and I can do this and I can do this. And I, yeah. I'm sure you can, and that's great. But please don't let's showcase all of that to somebody who's contemplating working with you for the first time. In 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 a way, I think it's useful for you, the supplier, to know you've got all of that, to feel, you know, confident and strong about how you can help people. Don't chuck it all at them. You know, it's a bit like say somebody comes around to borrow a scarf, so you give them the entirety of your wardrobe. <laughs> And all they wanted was a scarf. Very true. And and it reminds me of a conversation. I mean, I do have coaching clients still and, and you know, on very much on the how to turn my knowledge into digital products and get it out there. And one of my clients yesterday has, you know, she spent a, a, a long time, you know, six months, eight, seven months setting up a beautiful uh, digital funnel. Um, and she had money to do that. She she sold a house. So she was investing the proceeds of her house into, um, you know, getting this all set up because she knew it would get her out to more people than she had been on the speaking um, consultancy circuit. And but she's, you know, she's come to the end of her money and she doesn't she hasn't got, you know, as much as she wanted to live on and to run Facebook ads now. So she's got a beautiful funnel with nothing going in the front end of it. And so she's looking for ways to make money while she can so that she can then pay for, for the ads to get her funnel going again. And that's a very down to earth, pr- pragmatic way of looking at things. So in this call yesterday, she was trying to talk about three different things. I said, no, 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 no. We've got your beautiful funnel over there. Let's park that for now because we can't do the one thing it needs to get rolling, which is put traffic in the front end. Let's yeah. talk about the one thing you can do, the, the low hanging fruit thing, which you're incredibly well respected at. Um, you, you're known for. You made a brilliant living at it for ages. Let's just see if we can find a way to come at that, which is the low hanging fruit way of getting some fast money. And let's see if we can disrupt the industry. And by the end of the hour, we'd come up with something that was so disruptive. It was a really compelling offer for her previous clients. And she was sending out the email by the end of the hour. And fingers crossed, it will work for her. But we couldn't talk about three different businesses in one hour. We had to focus on that one. We wouldn't have achieved that. Yeah. And do you remember when we've run multiple businesses in the past? (laughs) (laughs) it's it's just hopeless isn't it i remember my coach's despair when i wouldn't decide between the hotel artist manager and the money gym yeah (laughs) yeah she said you know and it's a kind of insurance i think for entrepreneurs they think if they've got more than one thing on the go if if one if if one thing doesn't work they've got another thing to choose from 
But actually what it really does is it guarantees they won't take the steps necessary to make that one thing succeed. Yeah, yeah. So it's a sabotage again, isn't it? Yeah, it is a subtle kind of sabotage. It, it masking, masquerading as insurance. We're back to camouflage again, Judith. So what I think we should leave people with is is um, just just some things to be thinking about. One, who you are. Two, what you stand for. Three, how can you stand still long enough to be caught? Yes, and and four, just go and have a look, or or even better, there's a, um, a oh, I'm gonna have to dig it up now. I've said it. There's a a thing you can do where you can get something like six people, actual normal people, to look at your website for free. I, I'll dig it. I'll dig it out after this call, so we can put it in the in the group. So come to um, onlythepodcast.com forward slash fb to join our private group. Because that's where we're putting a lot of our resources now. And this thing will send normal people to look at your website and they record themselves talking while they're looking around your website and it is the most brilliant thing for making for showing you whether your website's confusing to the average visitor mm. or not that's nice isn't it and whilst we're talking about our facebook group have you seen that people have started chatting in there no i haven't seen that is that when yeah. did that happen uh this week um Excellent. somebody said so, yeah people have started two or three nice little comments in there interactivity in our facebook group has begun Nicola. well that's good it's it's um it's what's it called it's a 80 20 rule isn't it you have to get to a certain number before the 20 percent who are pr- proclivity to chat start chatting oh well, there you go yeah so just on just coming back to that thing you know i i have to really work hard at this to make sure that when people get to my websites they know exactly what they're supposed to do yeah. the one thing they're supposed to do and heat yeah. maps there's a really nice little plugin called Sumo Me. Um, and if you go to sumome.com, you can get this plugin and it enables you to put heat maps on your for free on your key pages and you'll see where people are clicking and it will shock you because it won't be where you think they would. Mm. Which is very helpful for again streamlining the visual nature of your offer. Indeed. So oh. keep it simple. Our, our core message for episode 50 is simplicity. Don't overcomplicate your offering. Uh, don't keep going and another thing and another thing and another thing strip it away so that people can get into your funnel um in a way where they're not overwhelmed yeah and it'll give you an immense amount of relief from the stress of trying to be everything to everyone oh yes that's a very good point it will word word of the week then judith you go first darling obliquity oh I think it's a made up word, but yes, it's, I think it might be. Can you spell it? Because I've got to write it in the show notes. OK, well, it's a book, actually. So O-B-L-I-Q-U-I-T-Y. I would have gone for that. Yes. Liquidity. It, uh, it was one of my random um, birthday gifts. Phoebe just goes into my Amazon book wish list and just picks a few books. Uh, largely, I suspect, by whether she likes to look at the cover or not. And uh, <laughs> it, uh, This is one that turned up and uh, I'm, I'm sort of enjoying it. It's a book I should enjoy, should be enjoying more than I am. But it's got a really interesting premise, which is that nobody ever makes a straightforward plan, sticks to it and achieves success with it. They often have to iterate towards success, i.e. make little incremental changes as you go, which is the lean startup kind of um, philosophy, which I, I enjoy enormously. But this uh, obliquity is is just it's about how achieving happiness is often not a matter of um, going to be happy or trying to be happy or working at being happy. You know, for example, how people um, discover they're in the flow when they're doing like little hobbies and things. Yes. So achieving happiness is not so much a matter of going for happiness, but for, for having a hobby that incidentally obliquely makes you happy. Yes. That's, so prepare to be surprised in a way. Yeah, and also don't you don't always think you can just go at things head on like a bull in a china shop, which is my my preferred method most of the time. <laughs> but but do be do be willing to open up your yourself to the idea of um, coming at things obliquely, and how a lot of big successes have accidentally come at things obliquely and, and achieved success like that. Well, you sort of said it, actually. You said, you know, I'm a person who likes working at home, but because the builders dug through the cable, I had to commute to Steve's to work for And I discovered I liked going out of the house. That's a good example of it, isn't it? Yes, that's an oblique benefit. Yeah, you didn't choose it. It came at you sideways. But actually, I think if you're the sort of person who makes the best of things and can easily see the upside of things now and again, um, 
you know, I, I, I quite like that. I, I don't think everything is linear. No, well, you'd, you'd probably quite enjoy obliquity then. It's um, it's a bit frustrating for me because I like the straight route to anything, but I'm I'm resonating with the the general philosophies being espoused in the book. Yeah. Okay. What about yours? Well, my, yeah, my word is ignite. Obviously, in yeah. in um in celebration of my new thing, but it gives me all sorts of um writery space to use ex related expressions like rocket fuel and things. So I've really enjoyed the sort of copy uh, uh that comes out of the concept of ignite and I'm thinking of like when a, a rocket takes off at uh, Cape Canaveral because it's going to the moon or something like that and you need all those boosters so uh, ignite is my word for very nice so project updates then well, I've got quite a dull week, actually. Um, so far, it's going to podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All about the lottery still. We've passed pre-launch. Um, we're in activation phase. That sounds a bit like we're going to the moon as well. Um, it's all about people now paying. The, got, they've got until the 5th of November to pay. First draws on the 10th of November. And a uh, new website live all reasonably exciting although actually three weeks seems like a long period of time to be honest if you're waiting for something exciting three weeks is long and yet we both know three weeks isn't very long it'll go past in no time so i'm a bit confused about which which um which project well, i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you more about it in who or what's impressed actually for now i'm just telling you my project update is all about the lottery Okay, well, my um, I've put Betty on hold at the moment because um, there's so much going on and there, it was so impossible to do it with no broadband. Um, and project updates I've sort of covered, you know, clicks and leads now bring yes. in clients like no tomorrow. And the yeah. only other thing I've got going is um, clicks, leads and sales, which is the mentoring side of things. And I have been doing a little bit of tinkering with that just to um, try out the idea. Because what I did was I made it so that everyone who opted into any of my free things got jumped to a consultation um, application page because I saw some of the big coaches were doing that and I thought it was worth a try. Well, I don't know whether it's because my traffic is is lower than theirs or not, but not one person applied to talk to me, even though I could, you know, in an hour really help people. And I hope I put, you know, made that come across on the page. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump people, anyone who opts in for anything free, I'm going to jump them to um, a one-time offer, which will be to join um, my mentoring, low level mentoring group for a 30 day trial for a dollar, because I know if they get in there, the 50% of them will probably stay um, because I'm in there every day helping people. So, um, you know, it's just, I'm just tr trying to just try, I'm trying to keep focused on clicks and leads, but I'm, when, when I have an idea for something, making something better, I do have to try and just action it as quickly as possible, stop the bee buzzing in my head quite so loudly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But I'm trying to limit it to those three things, really, <laughs> which is challenging, but I'm, I'm managing it somehow. <laughs> Who or what's impressed in Judith? Well, this same lottery company that um, launches on the 5th of November and um, the first draw is on the 10th, What's impressed me is that they, I think it was Wednesday last week. Was it Wednesday? No, it was later than that. When was the 15th? Ooh. Thursday, Friday? Anyway, towards the end of last week, <clears throat> they moved from their pre-launch website, which was pretty nice because it meant that people could register their interest to the real website where you had to convert that to paying. So if you wanted to be in it to win it, you had to pay your sub. Uh, but what's, what's really impressed me is, is how responsive and fast they've been in that week so that when we all joined on Friday and paid our sub we went oh wouldn't it be nice if the website did x and guess what by Monday morning it was doing it well wow. so I, I know exactly isn't that yeah, that's an impressive fast. thing isn't it? when you get feedback don't forget people like me are their unpaid sales force in effect we hope to be paid eventually but you know when you're a when you're bringing people in, it's affiliate marketing, really. When you're bringing people in in the early stages, in the pre law in the pre, you know, before it's live, we're not making any money. But it's nice to have the respect of them so much that they respond to your request for additional functionality over a weekend. Yeah, and and you know that is really hard to do because you've got your software developers who who've got a schedule and they like to stick to their schedule, yeah. and then you know getting something done that quickly is especially yeah. on the weekend. That's I know. Amazing. Well, so that's why that's why it's here. It's impressed me. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one. Um, okay, so mine is a bit random. <laughs> there was um, 
something I can't remember. Oh, I'm, I've got a, a bit of software called Slack, which not only enables me to communi- communicate with my team without having to use lots of emails. You know, we just it's like a direct messaging thing between the team and you can have channels. So each client's got its own channel. So any any conversation about the channel goes into that client's channel, etc. Anyway, one of the things you can do with it is you can bring in your Twitter feed. So if anyone mentions you or if you get any of your fee, um, tweets get shared or favorited or whatever, it alerts you. So that's rather nice. And I was just skimming through it this morning just to see seeing if there was anyone I needed to reply to. And I got something drew me over into Facebook, uh, not Facebook, LinkedIn, the one I never go to. I, over there, I was offered the chance to try this new app out, which apparently aggregates all your LinkedIn news that you're interested in and presents it in a rather nice little app. I don't know why I just pressed, yeah, go and get the app then just to see see what it was all about. And on on the first page was this story about this chap who has gone to work as an intern at Google. And he realized that it was going to cost him at least $1,000 to share a, a small flat with three other smelly blokes. Um, every month and he didn't really want to do that and he's he's practicing minimalism to the point where he's actually living in a van in the car park at google yeah i saw you mentioned this this morning i've been to his website already and i'm 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 just excited by this i love this minimalist living um, i thought you i'm so glad you have because i've totally yeah. forgotten his name and i've totally forgotten the name of the <clears> blog and i was going to have to find it afterwards but now i now i know yeah i can i you can <laughs> trust me to stick it in the show notes i've read it and uh, i think it's a brilliant brilliant idea and he's blogging really well about it it's it's like yes. a it's like a removal truck he's living in yes. and um, yes. apparently google don't mind this as long as he doesn't go on for too long and and they just think you know the, the, the security guards just think oh it's one of those eccentric um developers chaps and um there's a, there's apparently a few of them dotted around the because apparently G- google's mountain view um campus is absolutely enormous and it's got lots and lots of parking and it's in a very beautiful location so he he's but if you start from the beginning of his blog and just you know the, the posts are, are quite short and um he's talking about the philosophy of it how it came to happen and then he talks about buying the van then he talks about doing the van up and every week there's a little update on what he's done to improve the van and I've just read the one where the crows are hopping across the top of the van in in, in the early morning at dawn and pecking at his um corner of his van he didn't know what it was for ages he thought it was someone like a, a dream of a typewriter keyboard or something <laughs> the thing the two points I liked were um, the, the person that brought this to his, to his attention was his mother but he says he's unlikely to get laid when he's living in a van I thought that was quite amusing and he also has a little calculator that says how much money he saved by living in a van which sort of works in real time which I think is lovely yeah I I've just read the um the is it the Walmart or the the, the yes where, yes, is, where you where you go into B&Q or toolbox or something and get all of these things that make you look like you're a bomber <laughs> yeah make you look like you're a serial killer and he said yes. I'm surprised they weren't straight on the phone there's a bloke with a man who's just bought gaffer tape and, and rope and <laughs> got out nails <laughs> Which obviously isn't a very funny subject, but I found that I don't know. I've got a black hue. I would, I would like to live. In fact, I spoke to Sharon last night about this, and she said, well, she she had a short term accommodation problem. She was going to buy a caravan on the Isle of Grain and get her building team to do it up to a luxury thing. She'll be able to rent it out via B&B for five hundred a week in the summer. And it's a brilliant <laughs> idea. Brilliant idea. I love this idea. You see what you see it on Facebook a lot, don't you? These micro homes that you can. Yeah. I don't think you want to move mine around, but I like the idea idea of living in a small efficient space yeah there is um well there's george clark's amazing spaces on tv yes yesterday, but there's yes. so there is also a tv show called um tiny home or something and i absolutely watch it avidly knowing you know and i we did actually live in that teeny tiny flat in notting hill which was you know the be- it, the bedroom was a, a, the width of a double bed and not a big double bed a small double bed and the bathroom was it had one of those japanese baths where you get in and sit up to your neck in water we had to get rid of that i didn't like it at all um but it was minuscule but the living room and the kitchen were quite a decent size and it had a little balcony so and right in the middle of notting hill so you put up it really did force you to live that thing that you live which is you know one thing out one thing in mm. So I think it's- I think I think that I couldn't live in a van, but I think the challenge of living in a small space is very attractive. Yeah, it is. And um, and you just have to make sure it's a nice, nicely done up small space. As Sharon's got the yeah. right idea there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, pleasing. It needs to be pleasing and efficient, doesn't it? So, OK, so that's that's pretty much the end of the 50th episode. And I would just like to say to everyone, the reason that we are hovering in and out of the top 100 of the what's hot. And now, as most people don't get to 50 episodes, we're, we're hopeful that's going to have an impact on our chart position as well. 
So if you wouldn't mind, if you if you do listen to the show and you love it, would you mind going to iTunes and giving us a review? Um, you know, we won't say what star it should be, but we'll leave that up to your best judgment. And <laughs> if you'd like to join our community, which is starting to grow and chat amongst itself now, um, you can come to ownitthepodcast.com forward slash FB. And we'd be delighted to let you in there. So, Judith, thank you very much for being my companion on these on these 50 episodes. And I hope many. Not at all. Actually, it's still fun, Nicola. And um, that's the point, isn't it? Keep, keep yeah. Stand still long enough to be caught. We've done 50 episodes. Let's hope we're caught even more. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. See you next week. Okay. Episode 51. Yeah. Bye. Bye for now, darling. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com.